welcome everyone to Sunday Sentiments. And of course, this is a hate crime. And if she's found guilty, then she has to face the consequences. They normally end up killing some particular kinds of people. It's a violation of human rights. That's a very a traumatic event. Um, so I just wanted to ask the panel about their own opinions on this. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Sentiments. Sunday Sentiments is a segment on our YouTube channel where a panel comes together and discusses current events and hot topics from all over the world. Please do be aware, though, that all of the views that are shared on this panel do not reflect the views of Four Wings. These are everyone's personal opinions that they're choosing to share today. Um, and today's first topic will actually be about the bullying scandal that is happening at Helov's Holland School, which is where one of the Danish princes is uh, attending. Uh, there was a documentary called Helov's Holland's Hemdhilla, which means Helov's Holland's, like the secrets of Helov's Holland, um, that TV2, which is a news channel in Denmark, um, put out. And it describes cases of physical violence, bullying, and sexual abuse at the school. Now, in response to all of this, the principal himself um, responded by saying that the, the cases that were featured in the program were very old cases that have been used from another time where the culture at Helms Hot was different. Uh, and this was on the 3rd of May that he said this. He said, bullying, violence, or sexual abuse is not acceptable at Helms Hot School. So, um, before I give you guys a little bit more information after, I just wanted to hear everybody's opinions on this, especially since it's such a big case since the prince himself. Yeah, my, yeah, coming from Denmark, this was actually uh, big news. It is still big news here in Denmark. And um, if you follow the whole story, we also have students, former students um, writing, I think there were 200 students or some, writing a letter to TV2 and saying that this was a witch hunt and that uh, they didn't experience this bullying. And if there were cases, of course there were cases, but making it generalized that this happens uh, to most students was a misrepresentation. That is what the students are saying. Yeah, and then like you said, the, the, uh, the principal of the school also went on record denying that these things are happening which Shakira will give an update of what's going on. But I think it's a big scandal. I've been to boarding school myself, that was in Kenya, and uh, I was not bullied. But I know that there was bullying, not bullying, but actually I don't really remember cases of bullying in my school, but there were cases of bullying in other schools where you had um, seniors bullying juniors and, uh, the serious cases of actually sexual abuse in even female schools in Kenya. So these things happen in boarding schools and I'm shocked that uh, it was exposed here because it's apparently something that's been happening for a long time in this school in Denmark. Thank you so much Keshi for sharing your own views and also a little bit more information. But um, I think the fact that this is such a long, apparently a long history of this happening, I think it's also because specifically a lot of the people who go to the school, like the prince himself, are elites. So in my head, I'm just imagining that they can probably somehow get out of whatever repercussions if they did anything to any other students that they probably could get out of it. Uh, Nemo? Uh, my personal opinion is that um, in those kind of institute, institutions, uh, regardless of where they are, Africa, America, England, Denmark, bullying is inevitable. Or that kind of treatment is inevitable. Where you put people of different classes, different cultures, different races together, something will come up. So uh, there's no way they can try and say nothing came up because definitely something came up. We don't know exactly, maybe what, whatever it is, I read the article, but uh, yeah, it's inevitable. That's all I can say. 
Thank you. You're definitely correct. I feel like no matter how much one would like to imagine that the world is perfect and that everybody at this school could maybe be good, there's going to be a bigot somewhere who either they hate your like lower ranking class or they hate your race or your sexuality or your religion. Somehow there's always going to be bigots wherever it is that you go. Um, Kashi? I also want to say that some of the schools actually um, unwittingly promote bullying. For example, this school has the arrangement where they have prefects. And they say that this arrangement is actually inherited from the British educational system. Because whoever started this school, this elite school, he modeled it after boarding schools for the elite in England. So the, the thing with these prefects is that they were in charge of the younger students. And usually they were G, 3G, 3G students and they're in charge of the younger ones. And these ones were the ones perpetrating this bullying of waking people up and people being beaten and all this kind of thing. So this prefect arrangement is by the school, it's a tradition. Another tradition that was there with Shakira, if you have the video, we should show it, is uh, I sent the video on Sunday Sentiments where um, because the 3G students, they are the highest uh, ranking students because they are the seniors they are the ones in charge but at the end when they are nearly leaving the school there was this fight where they are supposed to be on an island and then people uh, the juniors now come and try to take power from them and anybody who has seen that video can see that uh, this is actually it can turn out to be fatal from what we saw from that video people being pushed in water and people being beaten but we have the principle of that school defending and saying that this is a fantastic tradition and that when he blows the whistle, they stop. So this kind of traditions that the schools have are also contribute to bullying. And I can remember we had the prefect tradition in Kenya. Uh, and in, those in some schools in Kenya, we had prefects actually had butlers in the school. They made other students their butlers to do yes, to do things for them. Uh, so these traditions or practices that they have in schools actually perpetrate the bullying because now you put people, students above other students and give them power to do as they wish. So you end up having this severe bullying, whereas other, other students are made serious victims of these so-called prefects. Also maybe call this a hazing because... school in Denmark there's a tradition that when you graduate when you're 16 uh, in ninth grade when you graduate there they basically like you throw caramels to the kids like it's supposed to be cute and then after you have a water balloon fight or a water fight but instead it's turned into a violent tradition so people will freeze the candy to like hurl it in kids eyes and these kids go down to the age of six years old and they will throw these like basically rocks in their faces and they'll like with the water they bring in a huge tank that's like a um a truck like truck bed thing that's like that big filled with water and people get like tossed in there they get like at in the end like the water from the sewers is also coming up and people being tossed into that so in the end it's a tradition that just lets somebody else abuse somebody like there's, I don't understand the logic in it at all. All these traditions are just giving leeway for violent people to put out their violent behavior and put it, like, take it out on younger students that don't deserve it in any kind of way. Jamila? Um, when I heard about this, it, it just reminded me of the show I used to watch called Gossip Girl. And that was literally the structure, and that's what happened. It was a school full of elites and then people who had scholarships. So the people who had scholarships, obviously they don't, their parents might not have money, all of this stuff. And then they would just, there would be a hierarchy. And it's just so bizarre that this type of stuff, like it's just reality for a lot of people. Um, and for people to just be like, oh, that was in the past, 
Every single school has bullying. You will never, ever, ever find a school, don't care how rich you are and how good the school is, there will be bullying of some sort. It might not be physical, it could also be like emotional bullying where they torment you all the time or gossip about you like Gossip Girl and make your life like a living hell. So like for someone to just deny that there's bullying in a school, it's just so, it's ridiculous actually. Yeah, that's my opinion. Thank you, Jamila. You're definitely right. It is quite stupid, or maybe he thinks the rest of the world who's hearing these comments is stupid enough to believe that in a school that has a hierarchy and a rank system that somehow there's no bullying of any kind, only in the past, and that has nothing to do with today. But um, actually, the update on this case, because he said that there was no bullying, we don't tolerate it on the 3rd of May. Then on the 6th, just three days later, he came out and said, we will be changing the culture because he acknowledged that in the end, everybody knows the truth. There is bullying at this school. It's very clear. Like even from the, <coughs> excuse me, the stories from the past students and like the videos that you see of that tradition that they're doing. Like you may think that in a group setting, oh, I can control them with my whistle, but there's always going to be somebody who you're not paying attention to who might just punch somebody in the face. Either way, it's physical violence that you're just letting happen because it's tradition. Uh, Keshi? Yeah, I don't know, Shakira, you know the latest of the latest news of this story. Now, this, this was a big deal in Denmark. Even the prime minister made some comments, the minister, minister, ministress of education or oh, say this is unacceptable. The brown screen uh, couple who have a child there also think it's unacceptable. And now the latest news is that this principal who defended this, uh, this uh, practice has been fired. He's been fired and the school is coming up with an action plan. And this action plan, um, they are doing away with, uh, with this with this uh, prefect system, that's one part of, it's a six plan, six point action plan. What it is with this school is that in this school, the kids uh, sleep in dormitories, but each child has a room, which I didn't understand. They, they have a private room where they go to study, but to sleep, they sleep in a huge hall. Everybody sleeps there to have comradeship. And that's where these attacks have been happening uh, people coming at night because you're defenseless, you're in a public hall, anybody can come, pull you out of your bed, beat you up and do whatever. So now one, the new change in the school is that the kids will be sleeping in their own rooms. Why they didn't sleep in their own rooms in the first place? Well, the tradition of comradeship where they are sleeping in that huge hall. So no more with that. And then they are going to offer help to the students who are affected by this bullying and they will abolish traditions that have led to people being physically and mentally abused, this abusive behavior, especially that fight that we saw, we have talked about that will be abolished. And like I said, the, the principal has been fired and they are going to have, um, there's going to be an, how, an investigation going back four years to what has been happening in the school. So you can see it has had big repercussions in Denmark and happily uh, they, they, they are making changes so that they remove, this is unacceptable. Anybody who has been in school knows bullying is there. You parents know your kids maybe come home, they have been bullied. So it's good that the government has gone in and said, no, 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 no. We don't care what the principal says. In fact, he doesn't need to be there. He's fired. It's a board of that school who has fired him because it's a private school. And uh, yeah, they are going to find researchers to investigate this situation. So those are that's the news um, latest from today, Shakira. Yes, thank you for that update because I didn't actually hear about that yet. But um I didn't hear you actually mention, like, I'm not just, it's not just poking, but I'm just saying, I didn't hear you mention anything about, like, what exactly are they going to do to the people who committed these crimes? Because it is a crime. You're mentally, physically, and sexually, like, assaulting someone. 
and it's like a daily tradition or I don't even know how many times they have done this and they're just going to be let go because it was four years ago or they were children I don't think so uh Shika um yeah my, I haven't had a good connection so excuse me if I'm just repeating points that have already been made uh but like Keshi I also went to a, a boarding school and um I wasn't bullied, uh, but I am sure there was bullying of people that didn't fit into particular popular groups or, or whatever. Uh, so for that headmaster, whoever he is to come out and say, there's no bullying or there was no bullying or it's old news. I think that's just ridiculous. There's no way you can have a group of uh, you know, kids together in a place and not have bullying. So already that's a problem if he doesn't want to acknowledge that there could be an issue and his response should have been, I will investigate it rather than trying to dismiss it. It reminds me a bit of um, the chief of police, I don't know what her title is, but of Merseyside, who in the, uh, the other day in the news says she can categorically say that there's no institutional racism in the Merseyside police. And I'm thinking, what, really? Have you spoken to each and every person of color to say you can categorically say that? I think it's very ridiculous to make such a statement because you're coming from a position where you think there's nothing to be done. And uh, then of course standards cannot improve if somebody already thinks there's nothing wrong. So I feel like um, that headmaster was wrong to come up with that comment. Uh, and also have to say, because it's a private school, we also know there'll be difficulties with finding the perpetrators because they're children of rich, influential people. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I hope there's a, there's a good outcome. I think I caught a bit of what Keshi said, that there's been some positive outcomes from this uh, expose. Uh, and I hope the perpetrators will be found and... Uh, I don't know what can be done. I mean, I just hope that they become better people in the future. Thank you so much for your point, Shiko. Um, I mean, both you and Keshi have both spoken very briefly about your experiences at private school and how you assume that there is some form of like, there must have been some form of bullying at these schools. Of course there is bullying because in these types of uh, situations you have uh, kids from like more vulnerable backgrounds or poorer backgrounds that just don't fit into the main uh, clique and then you have those people who look down on them and make their lives very hard and, and so it's very important to acknowledge that this happens and support uh, this kind of people and I don't mean I don't think it's only people from vulnerable poorer backgrounds that are bullied but I'm saying that's a start uh, rather than saying there's not, no bullying. It's ridiculous. Sorry, Catherine. Yeah, I, I agree. Bull bullying is everywhere. And I think the good um, outcome of that story, again, is that it comes out into the open because there are so many big stories. It's also within the Catholic Church, um, the abuse that happened over the years in boarding schools and schools. Bullying in schools is a difficult, it's a difficult um, thing to manage for the schools to, to, to avoid, to work with. And um, the important is that it is actually that people can come out and talk about it. And it's exactly like this. It's sort of um, the school is people think that it's a it's um it's an honor to be there and all around it ends up there's a lot of secrecy like with rape uh, a lot of women don't come out and and talk about it because they're worried about how the police is going to question them and that's the same with bullying you know you because what happens a lot and I've seen it in, in my kids have been to many different schools even schools that were absolutely fantastic and very looking into the individual individual child um, if the child is different and then because it's different it gets bullied it often is the child that leaves the school and goes somewhere else so in the end the victim is being punished and I guess with that especially with an elite school even if the kid might talk to the parents there is a certain high ah, you know just see how you manage it's so good that you're in this special school 
and that's how the secrecy um the secrecy comes about and that's why it's so important that people that these these stories make headlines and being talked about because it happens everywhere it's just we don't hear enough about it it's hard to deal with it's true Catherine I sorry Shakira I just saw a tv um segment with the, one of the boys who actually was not anonymous he came face to face and his face was shown and he was asked what are the repercussions he said already after this the, the word spread that he was in a documentary about the school the, he was removed from a group um, like a whatsapp group of school and then they said you have your stick you're stabbing us in the back or something now he's been made a pariah already and uh, you know so if you're in a school like this where it's higher ups who are there they're the ones who control everything so you wonder about the future of this guy finding jobs in the future because many of the kids or people actually who are interviewed former students and current who are interviewed didn't want to be to show their faces or their names to be named because they know that when they go out into the working world these are the very same people they'll be facing and maybe their future is in the hands of these people so like Catherine said, yeah, um, it's good that we shine a spotlight on this, but also remember it can be difficult for the people who are victims to, uh, to break this silence because actually it's, it will affect their future, which is a very unfair. They are being punished further. They are bullied and then being punished for, for speaking up. Thank you, Kashi. Um, it was actually, I was actually going to say something that I was reminded of uh, a few seconds ago, but for me personally, I just feel like um, that schools, like it's generally a lot of these like bullying things that happen even at other schools, it's very obvious. Like it's a commonly known thing by everyone. And sometimes the kids don't even have a problem doing it in front of the teachers because they know I'm high ranking or I'm better like than this person, so they won't do anything to me. And even though I mentioned this, I've mentioned this so many times on Sunday Sentiments, I was bullied in front of the teachers and they would only ever say anything if I retaliated in any kind of way. Even if it happened right in front of them, like somebody pulled out my hair from the root. But it's because I kicked him in between the legs that I was spoken to and said, violence is not always the answer. Even though I was violently like assaulted by that person. There's no kind of situation like the school just does not want to admit, like any school in general, they just don't want to admit that there's a problem there because then their reputation will go down. That's why they're going to keep like brushing it under the rug, hoping it doesn't see the light of day in hopes that some down, like some way down the line that it'll disappear. That's the same with this. It's apparently been happening for so many years and they knew that because all the kids here are elites, that especially the ones who are the, highest ranking are the ones who are going to be bullying the other students so of course they're just going to pretend that it's not happening and then when it's actually put out all of a sudden it's uh, principals talking about how oh that was back then it's not happening now and we don't tolerate those things just to take back his word three days later and admit that it's true i know i feel like that's just how it is in a lot of these situations and i do feel bad for uh the boy that came out um saying like like with his face out there and now he's been like turned into a social pariah because he just wanted to admit the truth like how am I stabbing you in the back because I expose the truth of how horrible all of the students at this school are like that doesn't make any sense to me um but unless anybody else has something to add Chico. Um, first of all, Shakira, um, I'm very sorry to hear about your experience. I know how terrible, uh, terribly it went for you in school in terms of bullying. Uh, so I know this is personal also to you. And I agree with your point. I just want to say I want to agree with your point uh, that many uh, institutions are more concerned about their reputation than in actually protecting the children that are in their care. And that's really sad. Um, so something needs to change. Uh, this is, uh, you know, religious institutions, schools, all these places are more interested in 
securing that good image they have than uh, safeguarding vulnerable people. I just had a question to ask the parents uh, on the panel. If you are aware of bullying or if your child comes with a story about bullying to you, how, how would you tackle this? How, how do you tackle it? I mean, I, I mean, the first the first instance for me would be to talk to the child, of course, to work really because bullying can be a big word. And um, of course, for parents, you know, bullying has to be something that it's targeted, it's constant. Um, but, you know, especially when in smaller schools and in, in when the kids are smaller, it's all this that all of a sudden all the group plays together and your child is not part of it, which is very emotional for a parent. And then it's the question, I would always, always talk to the school. I would always talk to the teacher to make sure to understand what is going on. I think the problem that parents and teachers have, especially in many big schools, where it's just about, you know, getting the they're getting the degrees and pushing the kids through from year to year is actually that they don't have the proper systems in place to deal with bullying um and um and that's why I, like i said before so often i've seen um like my kids haven't been bullied but they had this problem of not being integrated and i do ask the teacher you know because in that bit you know is the child doing something that actually triggers it, you know, and um, so, you know, then as a parent, I can work from home um, with the child to sort of change behavior because I just wouldn't rely on the school because so many times I just don't have the system because I would have to have people in there that actually can work with the child that is being bullied and also with the child that is bullied, that is bullying easy and most schools, schools are not set up for it. It's, it's a disaster really. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Catherine. I think Shiko had her hand up. Yes, we're going to go with Kirigo and then Shiko. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've been in that situation when one of my daughters was uh, bullied by a classmate. Uh, the boy put sand in my daughter's hair, which is kinky, Afro. You can imagine trying to get sun out of that uh, beautiful head of hair. And I was really upset when she told me that. So I thought I'm not going, going to the teachers. I'm just going directly to the boy. And uh, after I went to pick up my daughter, I uh, asked her, who is it? He's, he's, he's called whatever. So I went looking for the boy. And when I asked some boys, they said, oh, he's in the field. And then when they saw you coming, oh, he's coming. So I went and approached the boy. I was so furious, but I kept my calm because I can lose it. When it comes to my kids, like everybody else, I'm sorry. Uh, you're not going to do that to my children. All mothers, we all know this situation where you're so upset. But I went very calmly and I asked him, are you this, uh, is your name this? He says, yes. And then I told him, I'm really trying to be nice and I told him you put daughter Ella you put sand in my daughter's hair and I told him do you know how difficult it is to remove that I said she doesn't have this the, the hair you have is completely shaved down it's so difficult to remove can you please stop doing that he looked at me he says yeah do you know he never did it again I didn't need to be to involve the school teachers who probably will find an excuse like Shakira is saying, oh, what did you do to deserve it or that kind of nonsense. It's not all the time that the teachers actually help the stop the bullying. And that's why we as parents, we have to go there and defend our children. Yeah, by any means necessary. But we still have to keep our calm, which is uh, not an easy thing to do. Yeah, thank you, Kerigo. Um... It's, it's important for parents to be involved in their children. Shakira, you had something to say. Yeah, to be involved so that don't dismiss it and think, oh yeah, or oh, if your child comes home and they are sad and you think ah, they're just moody, there could be bullying going on in school. It's good to find out and see what you can do. And like Erigo said, keep your calm, 
but address the issue. And sometimes it helps to address the issue with the bully uh, directly because now you put him in a spot where he realizes he's been caught. Shiko, you had something to say? Um, yeah, I also uh, had an inc incident actually uh, where one of my, actually both my daughters were bullied and um, I'm sorry to say that the teachers were not much help. He was actually very disappointed. On one occasion, it was uh, boys will be boys kind of response. And on another one is, oh, you know, his grandmother just died, whatever. You know, there's always some excuse. Uh, there's no excuse for bullying. It doesn't matter who's died. Uh, it still should be made clear to students that there is no reason or rationale behind bullying another person. Um, so for me personally, and I, I know other parents have other thoughts on this, I taught my kids to protect themselves. If somebody comes for you physically, you need to defend yourself and I will be behind you 100% if the school tries to say anything. And that's what I always told my daughters. If it's something verbal, you come back with your own verbal thing. If it's physical, you protect yourself physically and then for them to just know that if the school involves me, that I'm gonna be behind them. So not to be scared that, oh, my mom might be called into school or whatever. So that's how uh, personally we dealt with it. Yeah, thank you, Shiko. But again, we have to remember that if it's group bullying, for example, it would be difficult for, for one person to, you know, I don't know. But thank you from the mothers who have given their experiences. And for anyone who is being bullied, remember, don't keep quiet about it. Tell your parents, tell the school, it doesn't matter. Shout out loud to stop this, uh, this uh, practice because at the end of the day, it can affect even your mental health, uh, sitting there getting stressed and depression because you're being somebody's, you're somebody's target at school. So yeah, it's not easy, but come forward and say it. Say it to a grown up, to your parents, to your teachers, say it loudly so that something can be done. Like th these boys were brave enough, or these kids, these students were brave enough to go on TV, knowing that they are gonna be targets to say their story. Yes, thank you everyone for watching. Um, please do subscribe to the channel and press the little notification bell so you know when we next post a video. Um, and also like the video and please feel free to share it with your friends. We really are trying to get the views up on our channel. Um, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.